Hello everyone. Welcome to Dr. Khalkar's classroom. In my previous video, I have discussed about the diffraction phenomena and diffraction at a single slit. If you have not watched my previous video, then go to my playlist and watch it. In this video, I am going to discuss about the diffraction phenomena at n number of slits. The assembly with n number of slit is called as a diffraction grating. So let's see what is diffraction grating in detail. In optics, a diffraction grating is an optical component with a periodic structure that splits and diffracts light into several beams traveling in direction in different directions the reflection of different colors or the structure of different colors that is totally depend upon the spacing of grating and the wavelength of the light so that the grating acts as the dispersive element very similar phenomena of dispersion of light we can see in the prism Let's take a very common example in our daily life that is compact disc. Ordinary pressed compact disc or DVD that is digital versatile disc. So our everyday example of diffraction grating and can be used to demonstrate the effect by reflecting sunlight them onto a white wall. This is a side effect of their manufacture as one surface of CD has many small pits in the plastic arranged in a spiral that surface has a thin layer of metal applied to make the pits more visible in this picture of cd uh, you can see the grooves of a compact disc that can act as a grating and produce rainbow like reflections so this is one of very important uh, and simple example of diffraction in our daily life in this diagram you can see a white light source that is a torch is there and when the light is coming from this source of the light when it incident on a small slit here is a slit and when the light passes through slit and incident on a diffraction grating we can see a rainbow like structure that is the spectrum which is called as a diffraction spectrum now let's see what is the diffraction grating actually and how it looks like Diffraction grating is nothing but an arrangement which consists of large number of parallel slits of the same width and separated by equal opaque spaces which is known as a diffraction grating. Normally uh, gratings are constructed by ruling equidistant parallel lines on a transparent material such as glass with a fine diamond point. The ruled lines are opaque to light while the space between any two lines is transparent to the light and acts as a slit. This is known as a plane transmission grating. When the spacing between the lines is of the order of the wavelength of the light, then an appreciable deviation of the light is produced. Now in this diagram, uh, you can see the surface of grating which is at uh, around a micro level or up to the few hundreds of nanometer level a blazed grating with a small anti-blaze angle to maximize the diffraction efficiency is shown in this diagram when light incident on such surface we can observe the diffraction pattern as shown in this diagram In this diagram, the path difference between the rays scattered from adjacent rulings of reflective diffraction grating is shown. Whereas this path difference is equal to small d in bracket sin theta i plus minus sin theta of m. Where small d is the spacing between the two ruling lines. Theta i is the angle of incident and theta m is the angle of maximum where we can see the diffraction pattern the comparison of spectra obtained from a diffraction grating and uh, a prism is shown in this figure uh, for the diffraction grating number one is mentioned and for the prism number two 
so the longer wavelengths that is the ray are diffracted more but refracted less than the shorter wavelengths that is the violet color so as you can see in this uh, diffraction pattern the extreme last color is a red whereas the starting color is the violet so in diffraction pattern we can see the diffraction spectrum from starting from violet to red so it's rainbow like pattern Now let's see the front of a diffraction in the diffraction grating. Previously we have seen the front of a diffraction at single slit. Now here let's see the front of a diffraction with multiple slits that is the diffraction grating. As shown in this diagram, let's uh, small a be the width of each slit and small b the width of each opaque space. Then small a plus small b is known as a grating element and xy is a screen suppose a parallel beam of monochromatic light of wavelength lambda uh, be incident normally on the grating then according to huygens principle each of the slits sends secondary wavelets in all directions therefore the secondary wavelets traveling in the direction of incident light which will focus at point p0 on the screen this point P0 will be the central maxima where we can get the maximum light. Now consider the secondary waves traveling in a direction inclined at an angle of theta with the incident light will reach at point P1 in the different phases. As a result, dark and bright bands on the both sides of central maximum are obtained. The intensity at point p1 may be considered by applying the theory of front of a diffraction at a single slit the wavelets proceeding from all points in a slit along their direction are equivalent to a single wave of amplitude which is starting from the middle point of the slit the amplitude of wave is capital A in brackets sine of alpha divided by alpha where this alpha is equal to pi by lambda into A sine of theta. This is the equation for a single slit. Now if there are n number of slits then we have n diffracted waves. The path difference between two consecutive slits is small delta is equal to 2 pi by lambda in bracket A plus B into sine of theta. So here A plus B is nothing but the distance between the slit that is the open space and the opaque space in the grating. So this small delta is equal to let's say 2 beta where beta is equal to pi by lambda into A plus B sine of theta. Let's say this is equation number 1. Hence the intensity can be found by finding the resultant amplitude of n vibrations each of amplitude a into sine of alpha upon alpha and the phase difference of 2 beta. Since in the previous case small a is equal to capital A into sine alpha upon alpha where small n is equal to capital N that is the total number of lines on the grating and small delta is equal to 2 beta. So substituting all these values in this equation capital R is equal to small a into sine of n delta divided by 2 divided by sine of delta by 2. So this all these equations we already studied in the previous video that is the diffraction at a single slit. So from that reference we are uh, directly writing this R is equal to uh, this equation. So the resultant amplitude on screen at point p1 we can write capital r is equal to capital a into sine of alpha upon alpha into sine of n beta upon sine of beta so this is equation number 2 therefore the intensity at point p1 which is on the screen we can write i square that is the intensity square is equal to r square that is as we know that the intensity is directly proportional to the square of the amplitude so from equation number two we can write i square is equal to r square that is equal to a into sine of alpha upon alpha bracket square into sine square n beta divided by 
साइन स्क्वेर बीटा दिस इज इक्वेशन नंबर थ्री इन इक्वेशन नंबर थ्री द फैक्टर ए इंटू साइन ऑफ अल्फा अपन अल्फा होल ब्रैकेट स्क्वेयर इट गिवज अस द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ इंटेंसिटी ड्यू टू ए सिंगल स्लीट वाइल द फैक्टर साइन स्क्वेयर एंड बीटा डिवाइडेड बाई साइन स्क्वेयर ऑफ बीटा दिस Term gives us the distribution of intensity at a combined effect of all slits. As you know that the diffraction grating is nothing but the there are n number of slits are ruled. The intensity distribution can be written as uh, let's see first case principal maxima. The equation number two will take a maximum value if sine of beta is equal to zero, where the beta's value is. Plus minus n pi, where n is equal to zero, one, two, three, and so on. Therefore, pi by lambda into a plus b sine of theta is equal to plus minus n pi. Hence, a plus b sine of theta is equal to plus minus n lambda. Let's say this is equation number four. Here, n is equal to zero, which corresponds to the zero order maximum, and uh, for n is equal to one, two. Three and so on. We obtain first, second, third, and so on principal maxima respectively. The plus minus sign indicates that there are two principal maxima of the same order lying on either side of zero order maxima. So equation number four is the equation for intensity distribution for principal maxima, which was a plus b sine of theta is equal to plus minus n lambda. Now let's see case number two, the equation for minima positions. The equation two takes minimum value if sine of n beta is equal to zero, but sine of beta is not equal to zero. Therefore, n beta is not equal to m pi. Hence, capital N pi by lambda into bracket a plus b into sine of theta bracket complete. Is equal to plus minus m pi. After simplification, we can write capital N in bracket a plus b into sine of theta is equal to plus minus m lambda. So this is equation number five, where in this equation, small m has all integer values except m is equal to zero, n, two n, up to small n into capital N. Because for these values, sine of beta becomes zero, and we will get principal maxima. Therefore, small m is equal to one, two, three, up to n minus one. Hence, capital N into pi by lambda in bracket a plus b sine of theta is equal to plus minus m pi, where m is equal to one, two, three, up to n minus one, n plus one. And then two n minus one. It gives the maximum position which are adjacent to the principal maxima. So equation number five is very important for the minimum position where we can get the diffraction pattern. In this diagram, we can see the diffraction pattern of the diffraction grating, where at the center, that is n is equal to zero, where diffraction angle theta is equal to zero, we are getting the maximum intensity of the light, whereas to its right hand side and the left hand side, where n is equal to one, n is equal to two, n is equal to three, and so on, we are getting the less intensity principal maximas as well as the minimas. So here at n is equal to zero, that is the principal maxima, as I told you before. Where n is equal to one is nothing but the first order principal maxima. Number two is the second order principal maxima. Three third order principal maxima, and so on. Whereas in the left hand side, you can see the minimas, that is the total n minus one, and the secondary maxima total n minus two between two principal maximas. So overall, the actual diffraction pattern is you can see over here in the below. At the center, you can see only white light, which is not a diffracted light. So that's whatever the light is coming from the source of the light we are getting at the center. Whereas at n is equal to one, 
to the right hand side you can see the diffraction pattern with uh, from violet to red color that is the complete rainbow like uh, pattern you will see similarly same pattern that is distribution pattern is n is equal to 2 it's the same as well as at n is equal to 3 also you can see the same diffraction pattern the, that is the distribution of the intensity similarly uh, to the left hand side also you can see at n is equal to 1 same violet to red spectrum at n is equal to 2 also violet to red second spectrum and at n is equal to 3 also violet to red spectrum so likewise the uh, diffraction pattern for the diffraction grating is shown in this figure Now let's see in this picture how actual diffraction grating is looks like. Uh, here it shows some uh, diffraction pattern which is like a rainbow structure. Whereas on the right hand side uh, it shows uh, the student's grating which is you will use in the laboratory to perform the experiment. So on this student's diffraction grating uh, you can see here 15,000 lines per inch that means per inch there are 15,000 lines are ruled so we can calculate the grating element so capital N is nothing but the these lines so capital N is equal to 15,000 lines per inch so this is all about diffraction grating that uh, we have seen uh, the structure of diffraction grating and how it works and what are the equations for principal maximas and minimas and so on in next video, in continuation with this topic, uh, I will discuss about Rayleigh's criterion of resolution and uh, what is the resolving power of grating. So see my next video in which these two topics have been explained. Below this video in the description, the links of important information or the videos are given there. Please go through it. Please like and share this video and subscribe to my channel if you are not subscribed yet to get the notification of my upcoming video lectures. Thank you very much.